Welcome to Fandemonium, where if you love something, we love award shows. Not really, but we'll talk about them anyway today. You love them, Lewis. Unfortunately, I do. I think it's like an ailment. Yes, it is. But you are not only, not only do you love them, you know everything about them. I could say to you right now, who won the Academy Award for Cinematography in 1945? Cinematography, I probably wouldn't know off the top of my head. Maybe the Best Years of Our Lives won? That was what won that year. Or the last week on 145, Best Years of Our Lives, 146, Best Picture. I think you all see my point. I'm Roth Cornett. I'm here with Lewis Rattel, and we're going to talk about it. But first, intro graphic. The Golden Globes are upon us, which means it's time to get drunk, America, and celebrities alike. And to predict if the Hollywood Foreign Press will go their own way and actually award Mad Max Fury Road shockingly a best picture win or if they'll go the more predictable route and go with Spotlight which is also a great movie um, and is winning most of the critical awards right now nationwide what did you think? Well I do think the interesting thing about this Golden Globes is it will determine I think the fate of Mad Max like yeah. we kind of are figuring out is it an awards contender you know there's certainly a contingent that's obsessed with it that wants to call it the best movie of the year but like every year there's one or two movies that like are audience favorites that like have that aren't players at all when it comes to the big yeah. races so I'm excited for that I still feel like it's going to be Spotlight because it's newsier literally like it's about journalists but it's it's just th that movie like punches you in the gut at the end you know while never boring you yeah what's interesting about Spotlight versus Mad first of all I think it's exciting for genre fans that Mad Max is even in the conversation right you know what I mean so that's exciting that's a win right there because normally it wouldn't be and maybe it will be in the Oscar comment conversation as well as far as a win goes they're very different movies they're both great I love them both Spotlight is remarkable remarkably understated, which is something that I really appreciated about it. It took a subject matter um, that could have been overblown and hyperbolic and overplayed, and it wasn't. Right. No, and um, among best pictures, with the possible exception of the King's Speech, like, I mean, it is extremely understated, but not in a way that would put anybody to sleep. No. I did sleep during the King's Speech. Fair enough. I apologize to I Helena. I will say this, though. Mad Max is a film that, to me, and we've had this conversation before, I know I like the movie more than you do, um, utilizes the tools of cinema to tell the story, right? It's not about dialogue. They are opposite movies in a way. Right, one right. is very much driven by dialogue and performance. The other one is driven by performance, sure, but it's certainly driven by the cinematography, the editing, um, the visual effects. The story is told in the camera, and that's something I really appreciate, and I don't think that we value as much as we should as film lovers. So I don't know. If Mad Max wins, I don't think it will. I think they will try to be Oscar predictors and go with Spotlight. Um, but if it wins, I say this now, I will get drunk on tequila right here on Phantomonium, and I will give you a drunk history of naked puppetry. I don't know why you went to that topic, but I'm going to trust that you're an expert. Oh, on naked puppetry? In fact, I am, and we're going to talk about that just in a minute. But first, internets. The Force Awakens is on its way to becoming the highest grossing movie of all time. Here are the movies it's beating. This is The Snap. Number five, Furious 7. Pretty sure this is the most popular seventh installment in an action franchise ever. I mean, besides The Force Awakens. Never mind, it's totally irrelevant. The real wild card category for me this year, though, is animation, which is almost never true, right? Mm -hmm. There's always like one movie that's definitely going to win. Yeah, it's by a company called Pixar, usually, yes. Typically, and they have a, probably the winner this year, which is Inside Out, very critically acclaimed. People love this movie. A lot of people think that it should be nominated for Best Picture. Right. Um, what's your take on that, by the way? Um, I, I just feel like one, Inside Out is like, the concept of it is something that I think everybody has thought about once in their lives. Like, what if like, everything in my body it, like was having a dialogue and yeah. we were like you know so I, I'm sympathetic to the idea but I kind of thought it was like too typical a Pixar movie and not as mind blowing as it wanted to be in, so I feel like it's a three star movie as opposed to a four whereas I feel like Anomalisa sounds like it's going to be so boring in theory and then is awesome yeah well Anomalisa okay so that's the other wild card right like mm -hmm. here's what's amazing they're both sort of like internal dialogue point of view movies, right. right? Because Inside Out is told from the perspective of this little girl and like what if her emotions all had sort of individual personalities and right. they were talking to each other. Anomalisa is about a man who is so disconnected from other human beings that he literally thinks that they look and sound the exact same. We never get animated movies about this type of character. This, we don't. That's sort of detached from society. And it's certainly never as like high profile, you know, 
it's, it's just amazing that we, it's an amazing movie. It's a Charlie Kaufman movie who, Charlie Kaufman, if you guys don't know, you probably do, but he, you know, he wrote Adaptation. Yeah, Eternal being John Sunshine Malkovich. Yeah, yeah. He makes very interesting, very smart, very well-crafted films. But twisted. They're weird. Yeah, they're twisted. And this is a movie that has naked, full frontal, Puppet nudity. This is a ma- this is this is puppet penis, people. Puppet penis in this movie. Puppet puppet. I'm gonna say it. Can I say it? Puppet kind of lingus is in this movie. There's puppet sex. There's puppet banging in this movie. Um, These are all search terms for this episode <laughs> of Phantomonium, by the way. But my point with this is that it's it's Pixar versus full frontal puppetry. I mean, it's right. insane to me. And for me, Anomalisa is actually between it's Mad Max and Anomalisa that are both number one favorite movies of the year, very different films. Right. So I think that Anomalisa deserves it. If 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 there's going to be an animated film that gets a Best Picture nominee, a nomination, I do think it should be Anomalisa. However, I do not think there is any way that they are going to award this because he's obviously, to some degree, messing with you. Right, you right, know? right. I mean, it, it is just such an impressive movie. It'd be one thing if I thought, like, the critical consensus about Anomalisa towered over Inside Out, but, but weirdly, they're, they're kind of similar. Yeah. You know, so it's like, I could... I I could see it going either way. I'm gonna. I, all I can say is, one year, um, Pixar won be, the best animated feature with Brave, so they're due for a loss. Okay, Brave was only okay. Yeah, well, I know? do. I mean, listen, Inside Out, I think, is a terrific film. They're very, very different films. I do think it'll win. Um, I will say this: if Anomalisa wins, I will get drunk right here on Fanimonium and do a drunk history of Ricky Gervais's career. Oh my gosh, <laughs> <laughs> this is your new way of segueing between. <laughs> Just threatening <laughs> with alcoholism. It's the Golden Globes. If we're not drinking, we're not doing it right, people. Right. Okay, you guys, let us know in the comments. Do you think that we are going to see a naked man penis puppet win a Golden Globe? Like we should, and I think we've all been waiting for, right? Right, yeah. Now that you mention it, yes. Yes. Let us know in the comments. And now let's talk about Mr. Ricky Gervais. Okay, so he's back. Nope. What do you think? Now, I feel like... The whole world loved Tina and Amy so much yeah. that he can do nothing but fail. I, I sort of feel bad for him, you know? Yeah. What do you well, think? What's weird is, like, I feel like the people who uh, like Ricky Gervais as, like, the host of the Golden Globes really just like him, and it's it doesn't really have to do with how, like, damning or funny he is. Whereas yeah. I really thought Tina and Amy brought amazing jokes. Like, right. even if you didn't like them, which you should be fired off the planet, like... The jokes themselves were so good and so, like, a little bit damning. And, like, you put George Clooney in his place. And, yes. like, you know, so it was, like, really impressive. Whereas I feel like I, with Ricky Gervais, if a joke doesn't land, he's like, eh, whatever. You yeah. know? Well, with Ricky Gervais, I will say this. I, I actually really love Ricky Gervais. Mm-hmm. Um, I am, I was a big fan of The Office. I Never heard of it. Go ahead. Yeah, I liked his, I like a, an idiot abroad, mm-hmm. you know, extras, what have you. Um, but as far as being a Golden Globes host, he is very damning, but it's like, it's it's not always really funny. Yeah. And it's odd because it's really more about like giving a scathing review of Hollywood, which is interesting in its own way, um, but it's not as lighthearted. It's not as fun. I don't think it moves as quick. Right. Also, I'm sorry. If you're going to host an award show, I prefer you sort of be into the actual awards. Like, right. He's so detached that it's like he's just straight up making fun of this, the ceremony. And Tina and Amy were good at like removing themselves intellectually from like the stupidity of what's happening around them while enjoying it, yeah. I thought. I don't think anyone really cares about the Golden Globes, though. You know what I mean? Like, I Maybe. don't even think the HPFA t- technically really cares about it. Well, there's like four of them, yeah, right? There are four of them. And, and they look like the Marx Brothers and they have accents. <laughs> I think that they want to get celebrities there. I think that it becomes, oh, a, yeah. it becomes like the, they're in a fish tank of vodka and then we watch them swim around um, right. again drunk, you know? And I think that's like, that is the appeal of the awards. And they become, I think, of Oscar predictors, but they're very pointedly Oscar predictors. Right. All of the critical awards are basically in like meaning that that all of sort of everything all of the data has been gathered and so for the golden globes it's very easy for them to predict what is going to win academy award right generally speaking, generally yeah, speaking yeah. like the not all of them are completely done we still have um yeah, the some producers, acting categories some yeah, acting yeah. categories things like that but i feel like it's not very difficult if you wanted to predict what was going to win an academy award if you were in the hpfa you right could. I, I will say about the golden globes something that's strangely interesting about them is hfpa yes is uh the tv categories rarely match up with the emmys anymore because they're so obsessed with awarding the newest tv show you yeah. know so it's like gina rodriguez 
wins a Golden Globe. You know, sure. Lena Dunham in the first year of the girls won like the acting one. Uh, so that's fun. Like what they randomly pick because they want to seem like they've watched television in the past two weeks or yeah. whatever. So the the I will say you're right about that. TV is actually the less predictable aspect of the Golden Globes, and the Emmys are remarkably predictable when it comes to what right, they're awarding. Right. And so that's sort of interesting. Plus, um, you know, naked puppetry. So that's what we <laughs> have to say about the Golden Globes. Um, you let us know what your favorite uh, naked puppet movies are in the comments, and we will see you here on Sunday night to yeah. talk about it. We if, hope if something we, interesting if happens. If we're not like head first into like margaritas at that point. Oh no, we're going to do it then too. Yeah. Okay, thanks for tuning in to Phantomonium. I'm Roth Cornette. This is Louis Vertel. Louis, where can they find you? At Twitter on Louis Vertel, where I'm going to keep tweeting. And Please follow. <laughs> so many people follow you. You have a huge not following. Not enough. Yeah. It's never enough. I'm Roth Cornette on Twitter and Instagram. And like us, love us, follow us, do things to us. Uh, make love to us, and we will see you on the next Phantomonium. For breaking entertainment news and more, follow at HitVix on Twitter or visit HitVix.com.